Let's podcast. It is one o'clock or actually closer to 102 on Thursday, an hour before we typically do Sleek Fleet OG Live. Sleek Fleet OG Live is on location today. We are at Longleaf Swine in downtown Raleigh. It is officially the most wonderful time of the year, Joe. Let's go, man. It's NCAA tournament time. It's Christmas, and we're hoping to win our first bet today, <laughs> which is the under in the Michigan State Mississippi State game. Who do you have? Uh, see, I only deal I with the under. I only deal with money line right now. I'm not. I'm not ready Look for the other you. stuff. Look I'm, I'm not you. ready for the other stuff. I'm. I'm all about the money line, and I'm all about some ridiculous prop bets on DraftKings. I'm so proud of you. I know. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. So, uh, a couple of housekeeping notes. Big thanks to Sleek Fleet. Check them out online, sleek-fleet.com. They bring you our OG lives on Thursday. Again, we typically do these things at 2 o'clock on YouTube, but because of the NCAA tournament, we wanted to make sure we were here, locked in, ready to go, ahead of the 245 game with North Carolina. They're taking on, what, Staten Island's finest, right? Wagner. Wagner? Yes. Okay, very cool. Oh, buddy. Is that? It's going to be a day. Meaning what? It's going to be an effing day. And meaning what? I won the first bet of Look the day. Look at you, Joe. <laughs> Look at you. Let's what go. Know, baby. So check out sleek-fleet.com. Uh, this is not your ordinary ride share. This is top of the line meeting your needs. And one thing to think about, it's cool to use for Canes games. It's great to use to get a large party out to the airport. But... The U.S. Open is going to be here before you know it, and you probably want to get out to Pinehurst uh, in style. Sleek Fleet can help you out with that. Yeah, I mean, especially if you can't stay down there. You know, you're, you're going to want to be able to go back and forth. You're going to want to be able to enjoy yourself. Yep. So do yourself a favor. Check in with Tyler. It's sleek-fleet.com. And again, big thanks to Longleaf Swine for having us out here. Uh, I figured what we could do is get things going with the Evan Williams. We're going to go with the, uh, with the piggyback. A little pickle. A little pickle. So we go with the Evan Williams whiskey first. And then you follow that up with the brine. They got two kinds of brine here. They got a normal and they got a spicy. I don't know which one I got, so we're about to find out. Well, come on down. Look at these shirts. It was not the spicy. Little pocket tea. It was the good stuff. And, of so, course, the shorties do not count, right, Joe? They do not. So we've got T-shirts to give away today. Long Leaf Swine, Rialto, thanks to our friend Hayes Permar. I've got tickets to go see the Pat McGee Band yep. Friday night at the Rialto. Uh, if you are 49 or in your 40s, you remember the Pat McGee band. <laughs> Puts on a great show. Looking forward to that. We also have, thanks to our friends at Breeze Through, we have four tickets to Sunday's game against the Maple Leafs. Not only do you get the tickets, you get to ride on the Olympia. I feel so... Um, you gotta be, you're very I, official. I, I feel like such a poser when I say that. But Yes, but you have to qualify the right name. If you're unfamiliar, it's the Zambo. Yes. So uh, Breeze Through, Freeze Crew, they do such a great job with the Canes, with us, and, of course, home base there right on Edwards Mill Road. They have 17 locations, though, throughout the state. Can't say enough good things about Breeze Through. In part, we have the gigantic Ethernet cord in action <laughs> today. So how many feet is that thing? We got Adam's here, so we might have to ask him how long it actually is. I feel like it's easily over 100 feet in order to oh, get it all the I way to where it Oh, that's right. You do have control of the uh, of the of the stuff today. This is a glorious day. Well, I just had to make I sure. I have that, never had the board. I just had to make sure that things were in proper. <laughs> no, you're hitting. No, <laughs> no. There you go. That's what not, happened? My juices. That that's the other one. Oh. No, that's the beep sound. I think my juices. It should be right there listed. No, that's Tecmo. So where's juices? Oh, oh, you have them labeled. Yeah, they're labeled. Look Come at on, that. Man. You think I'm amateur hour Look over here that. when it comes to this technology? Anyway, speaking of amateur hour, that's what brackets typically tend to be. It's amateur hour. You can be like Jillio and try to find all sorts of ways to get in and out of things. But you, sir, have you got, you've named a bracket. You've got a bracket. We yeah, got it. I've also, decided. Brownlow, over here, this microphone, that's Brownlow. Fine. I already lurked behind you. I know. You already lurked. Bra Brownlow's going to jump on here in a second. But here, Lauren, oh, over here, my side. Here's the microphone. We'll, we'll, we'll bring you on here in a second. So do you have you have a name for the bracket? Yes. So instead of the perfect bracket, which I created, by the way, and others often duplicated, never yes. imitated. Yes. However, I've now decided that brackets should be like boats or vacation homes. Yeah. Where you get to name them. Yeah. So my bracket this year is bracket luck is real. Okay. Okay. I like 
because Hold while on. I think it's Joe's technically in control of the board, Bra Laura Brownlow just showed up to Longleaf. She's in the house. What up, Brownlow? The hottest Hello. mic in the history. Yeah, of the in world. fact, you can actually, if you want to, just <laughs> remove Joe's bag and you can sit. Okay. And then that way I'll, I'll move uh, the camera around. That way you're, you're you're good to go. Folks, this is live podcasting at its finest. That's how we do here at OG Triangle Media. So by all means. So bracket luck is real because not only do I believe in the Tar Heels, yeah. do I think I have a good team. Yeah. Okay. They have the easiest fucking path I've ever seen in my life. What? Tony Penn, Tony he's Bennett. On the, he's on this about it being a really easy. Are you easy okay? Path. Yeah. Tony Bennett in 2019 is like pointing at the movie screen like. Oh my god! What? Do I have to deal with unhinged Virginia takes from you people too? Because I, I no, will throw. No, we something. were asking for you yesterday. Yeah, we actually wanted your unhinged. When Tony defense. said we're we're changing systems, I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. yeah, or no, yeah. we have to look at it. No, they do. Well, he said. Look that, at it. By the way, remember it was either seventeen or eighteen. They literally brought in like a, like somebody to help him tweak the offense after that, mm -hmm. and you saw them reap the rewards of that. Like he he was like, it's not working. We need to tweak something. So to his credit. He has seen what we all see. It ain't working. Something's got to get tweaked here. Something's got to change because they don't have guys that can run it as effectively as they used to either. That's another part of the piece. That's you, another piece of the puzzle. You know what they need? They need talent. That's what yes, they need. That's the biggest thing. But also, it, I mean, we were talking yeah. about this yesterday. It's that's like, huh, what was different between these groups and the one that won the national Here's, championship in 2019? What yeah. do they need? The, the, all of them lost <laughs> in the first round except the one. With three NBA players. With actual dudes. Weird. I You're just, telling me that college basketball is predicated no, on talent? I, what I'm saying to you, Lauren, is I've finally come around on Tony. What he does works. Yeah. But obviously you have to have the right players. Yes. What he 100%. Does, what he does works better over the long haul than a one-off situation in a tournament. For sure. That's, there, like, that's it, his it has primary its, I'm issue. not going to argue that it has yeah. its drawbacks in that scenario, but I would also say that it presents a lot of challenges for your opponent in that scenario, yeah. too. And, like... They've had some unlucky breaks over the years. They get Michigan State teams that didn't decide to try until March and knew it wouldn't matter. Yeah, okay, and that yeah. you know what I mean. Like they got teams that were better than they were. You know, they they had some bad bracket luck too. But the last really since they won the title, I don't think they've had that. I don't. I just don't think they've performed in the NCAA tournament. Like period. So, so yeah, I had jotted down turning time. Big questions. I had four big questions. Okay, four big questions. The first question will start with North Carolina since they start at two forty-five. And with North Carolina, the, the simple question is. They, they get it, right? Like, they get what they are. They get what they need to do. Yeah. Right? They get it. And I, I still think the ACC title game was more was much more about State okay. than Carolina, in my okay. opinion. No, I'm just... I think, yeah, I think State's defense bothered Cormac Ryan, bothered Elliot Cadeau. I think all three of us Ingram, yeah. have said all year long, Carolina, you know what you're going to get out of Baycott. Mm -hmm. You know what you're going to get out of Davis. Davis. Even though yep. Davis has been spectacular mm -hmm. at times. Even sure. better than anything we've but seen But he still him. needs help, yeah. It, they're, they're at their best when they get help. Yes. And in the State game, Cadeau they couldn't get it. to the rim. Yep. Ryan shrunk. Yeah. And, and Ingram, Harrison Ingram, Ingram struggled. Didn't have the same type of game. That's yeah. all. But D if you look, you know, DR they, gave him a hard time. I think yeah. he did. If you look, though, they've lost. They lost consecutive games once this year, mm -hmm. and that just so happened to be Connecticut and UConn. Yeah. So let's let's forgive them for those two. Oh, I'm not like. But to your point about learning, yes, I feel like every time they've lost, yeah. Hubert, who was the coach of the year, as we said he should be, has been able to go back to them and say. A little bit like a little Tony, a little Herb, right? <laughs> yeah. We have to play this way in order to be successful. Yes. yes. When we don't do this, it doesn't work, guys. And, and like, see, here's your evidence. Like, exactly. Yeah, I agree. I'm not. I'm not that concerned about them. I mean, obviously, like, and people keep pointing to Arizona, but like, it's not a given. Arizona even gets. To yeah. that place and that's nothing it's not a knock on arizona but they certainly haven't had the best tournament luck themselves over you know whatever so i mean i i don't know i mean i i, I like the way they're playing i think that they'll be fine even though i get like an alert the other day it's like vulnerable one seed north care i'm like are we doing this for real we're 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 already so down on the league well as someone told me it's it's virginia's fault that everyone well, hates acc basketball which is like I, it's the richest of virginia takes i've well, ever it's heard. funny uh it's funny you mentioned that when two, the big look, ten look has always two, existed. look at the booty we got now buddy two roosters in the house yes. what do we got they just jumped oh, on yeah what did you what did you bring what did you bring well first of all i got just some of that watch the watch the beer joe watch the beer <laughs> tanglement here <laughs> Hold on a second. We got live beer. No more shorties some, for Joe. Some, some Tuffy Tracks. Have you guys heard about the Tuffy Tracks? Yes. Please explain Tuffy Tracks. Okay, so we're partnering with NC State Athletics yes. for the historic 
you know, ACC run, of yeah, course. Man. Yeah, man. So this is uh, reminds me a little bit of the basketball tourney. This flavor, uh, a little bit uh, chaotic, full of excitement, <laughs> but definitely sweet. But so we've got that. like brownies, Oreos, fudge, red M and M's, cookie dough. <laughs> I mean, come on. How did you not eat this? All the things. It should start All the out things. with something like bad, and then by the end of the bite, it tastes amazing. It's like elation. It's yeah. elation. That's what yeah. it is. Or bittersweet. I don't know. I should. No, it's great. So That's many different amazing. directions. Wow. Love it. I love it. All right. The roosters. Oh, you do? You should give that right to my dad. He'll what? be like, what he'll be you, in heaven. Else? Oh, the bourbon coffee? Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. I'm going to have to get to this in a second. So listen, we got ice cream down here. We got drinks down here. We got shirts. We got tickets. What else do you want? We got everything. Come see us. Come see us at the Long Leaf. Yes. We got takes. We got basketball takes and things like that. So we appreciate that. Give that one to Lauren. All right, Lauren. He bought me oh, my special. I'm going to have to take my, my dairy medicine. <laughs> yeah, no <laughs> kidding. <laughs> no, I know. I know. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah, we're giving oh, away. That's so nice. We're giving yes. away. Thank you. Oh. So, <laughs> thank you. All right. Big thanks to Jared, Two Roosters, uh, for sponsoring us and then, of course, bringing out the ice cream. We don't is, deserve Two Roosters. Absolutely, no, we really don't. Fantastic. Although, it's funny. You were... Lauren, you were talking about Virginia in the yeah. takes. That was actually my fourth and last question, but it actually gives me a chance to transition to it in the sense that do they count with the rest of the ACC? What no, do you mean? No, because I feel like Virginia is the outlier here. I think everybody understands what Virginia is in comparison to everybody else. Right. Well, yeah, I mean, and again, it, it's like, yes. And I think in like, college not- basketball, there is still more of that, like, you can still view teams, and I will fight for this. You should and can still view teams as individual entities. Right. That's what and I'm I saying. am so tired of like the whole grouping of everyone if, based on what conference they're in. When we all know how arbitrary that is in the first if place. If you ever needed an example of how things are arbitrary and how you don't have to lump everybody together, I think everybody can recognize. That's why I brought it Virginia. The concept of Joe. Joe. <laughs> Joe. I mean, are you locked in? I am, but I gotta take care of it. We'll take care of that. <laughs> Anyway, so you know what? We're just going to go you and me more here. Hold That's fine. I got me, it. Uh, it's not like we've never let, done this before. Yeah, it's not like we don't do this every so often. Anyway, the point is that if you ever needed proof that you can take one individual school out and put it on the individual school and not the rest of a conference, yeah. Virginia is the prime example of this. We know what their history is. And I even sure. said this to Joe yesterday. As much as I want to defend Virginia in their previous issues with being out of the NCAA tournament, yeah, it's happened enough times now where you do have to ask a legitimate question, like what's going on, which gets that that whole business of taking the assessment of the program. Well, and I think like this year though, because in past years, what, I think the reason it was like such a thing was because they were dominant in the regular season. You know, like they wouldn't lose very many games. They would win the ACC regular season, whatever. And so everybody would go, well, you can't really argue with their results. And then when they got the tournament lost, people would go, well, see, they really weren't, they were fake all along. But now they've been this the whole, tar- the whole year. Yeah. Like they either... Like win close usually, except for state. That was the first close loss of the year, literally. Yeah. Or yeah. they lose by like twenty. Yeah. I mean, that's been that's been almost every game they've played this year, and that's that's not a sustainable model for them going forward. It's just not. All right. So I think we answered that question. The next question that I had was: Is for NC State specifically the big question is: Is the run done? I don't know. I, I I'm not counting out anything after what I saw last week. I'm just not with them. I can't. That's a lot. I'm, I'm just, I'm not counting anything out. Why? Can, how can I? So then it gets to the question of how long. I think, like, if you ask State, I bet you they would have wanted to play the next day. I'm not mm-hmm. even joking. Like, start the NCAA tournament today because their role, like, that's what you fear, I guess, is that, like, almost like, like, you know, it's like rookie, rookie even, of the year, even, you know, like when the kid in, loses the magic arm or whatever, like you fear that the magic has like worn <laughs> off. Even, whatever, in, even but, in college, you get to a point where you need a break. Like, I'm going to party tonight. Oh, no, I'm going to party again tomorrow I don't know night. how. I still think I'm like that was. three days of spring break. Let's go. At some point, it does catch up, you, catch up with you and you have to recover. So I'm curious. Sure, I mean, surely Carolina yeah. earned their number one seed. Yeah. Right. And NFC State's lucky to be in the tournament. Texas Tech's really good. Like yeah. they're tough. Yeah. They defend. They're athletic. Uh, to repeat a point I've been making all year, the difference between these teams is just very little. It's it is. It, it's confidence. Which also, which also gives and, you like the feeling that like could state do something? Yeah, absolutely. You know what I mean? Like yeah. because there isn't that big like it's not like there's this huge gap of talent between No. So uh, only if they win one game, Kentucky well, is uh, yeah, the most Kentucky. talented team in the field. Yeah. I'm not even Carolina. Carolina fans can't even argue with me on that one. 
I'm safe with no, that. No, take. no, no. I think yeah, by now, right I think that. Carolina fans have seen enough to the point where they understand that. First, I did a hit with uh, Wes Durham and John Henson on Sirius XM Radio on Monday. Mm-hmm. And even even Henson, when I floated to him, I'm like, come on, John. Like, even you recognize that this is – it's a good Carolina squad. Yeah. But in January, when people were talking elite, that's not what this group is. And he goes, yeah, even I'm having a hard time processing that this is a defense first team. Yeah. Not that Carolina, fans, Carolina teams don't play defense. No. But this is the first time maybe ever – that it's a defense first team, not defense complementing what they're doing. Well, and you know what, what's interesting to me too is like, yeah, defense first. It's been, I mean, in my lifetime, I'm trying to remember the last one. Maybe the closest I can remember is like 06. Yeah. I remember that team really kind of like identifying on that end of the floor. They were really young. They had the pieces of the seniors that would win the title, but they they were young. And so I remember Roy kind of emphasizing that a lot of like, we're going to defend our butts off, blah, 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 blah. And like, that's probably the last time I remember that being the case. And the problem is their offense had been kind of a mess for the last couple of years. It'd been up and down, streaky, just not coherent. And I think like the tweaks on that end have been really beneficial as well. And the way this group just plays together. I mean, you have to have guys that can improvise and know what they're doing and make a smart basketball play without it all being like prescribed where you're supposed to go. They have to have an instinct that is good from a basketball sense. And that's not, you know, that's hard to like teach. You can't just, yeah. you know, you can't just teach basketball IQ. I think you can hear me, but I was struck in DC of how connected they are yes. and, and the yeah. urgency that they play with. And I know some people are like, Oh, I didn't see it in the, State game. No, guys, they played. No, like, Carolina played hard. Like, yeah. That was why that game was so saying. great. State like, was just better. I don't yeah. know why, I don't I mean, know why it's that hard. Carolina, struggling with Carolina that. did make shots at the end when they could have made it a game. Yeah. They got but, good ones, though. They also, didn't, like, take rushed panic shots. Also, quite frankly, Casey Marcel did a great job on yeah, R.J. Davis. 100%. R.J. Davis had been the difference in the first two games. In the second half. Like, yeah. I, you know, so I, I, was, I was struck, though. Carolina's playing a, you know. Who, who were they playing in the first game? And I'm like, they have no, oh, Florida State. Florida State. Yeah. It was kind of like, and they smoked. They them. just absolutely knew the assi- assignment, understood it, showed up, did their jobs. It was impressive. Yeah. And, and then the last, the last of the four questions that I had, oh, one boy. was about UNC, one was about State. Obviously, the you know does Virginia count with the rest of the ACC, which I think we all agreed is no. Remember Duke? Who? No one does. Y'all, y'all remember Duke? No one does. I, I mean, is it too late? I wrote an NCAA I, pool. There's like 70 entries. I think three people total have Duke. So yeah, I was gonna say as down as Yahoo Sports was on yeah. Carolina as a vulnerable one seed, uh, uh, oh. they, people are way more down on Duke. Yeah. Way, way, way down on Duke. I mean, my whole entire concept because I, we, we we got a couple of Duke fans who listen to the podcast, and we appreciate the Duke fans who listen to the podcast. And they're like, y'all haven't really spent a lot of time talking about Duke. And my response it feels to a little redundant would be, almost. Who is talking about Duke in the grand scheme of things? I think next year is your year. It, well, we still have to talk about this year and whether or not it's too late for them to click. I mean, the fact that they're talking about getting, you know, bounced by NC State and all, oh, we have to reassess. There's a players only meeting. It's it's late, man. It's I, late for that. Kind I do of like stuff. their draw. I do think they will beat Vermont. Sure. But yeah, then, I do too. Unlike the governor, unlike the attorney general, I respect <laughs> our founding fathers. <laughs> and James Madison at 31 and three is well, going to be dancing into the Sweet 16. I mean, the governor can't pick James Madison to no. beat Duke. Like, the, the, no, he, <laughs> he can't, can't pick that. James Madison to beat I know it's a private school, but still, I'm sure there are plenty of people at Duke that... You have to respect <laughs> your elders. Yes, yeah, your political elders. <laughs> from, uh, from Rodney in the YouTube chat, Duke versus Dukes is all you hear right now. Yes, that is true. That is true. From Justin, drunk Jillia with the soundboard seems like a deadly combo. I'm not drunk. I, I put <laughs> Rand in charge of the ice cream, by the way. How do you think he did? Oh, you mean Buddy the Elf is in charge of the sweets? Yes. Yeah, that's a great uh, that's a great plan. Wait, when does housekeeping I'll, I'll come over and do it live? I mean I could do we could do we're actually scheduled to do housekeeping Rand. right now. <laughs> Jeez. All right, Lauren, we appreciate you hanging out. I'm gonna take your microphone. We're gonna okay. give it to Rand here in a second. So that way Joe's not constantly handing the mic over. So here no 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 Rand, 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 over here, over here. Joe doesn't understand. Joe doesn't understand we have a third mic, so it's all good. Oh, so we're gonna have you come over here, and yeah, Lauren, Lauren, Lauren's segment is is done. It's done. So, are you ready to do? Are you ready to do a live housekeeping? Sure. I just had some um, pimento mac and cheese. 
everything. Okay. From the from the Long from Leaf Swan. Swan. Wow. You also made sure you gave everyone the hard sell on the free ice cream. I told them it's two roosters. We don't have any. Yeah. They support us. People thought that I was working for two roosters, and I, I should have had business cards. Good. So that's my bad. All right. So this is what two housekeeping. Roosters, I'll do it if you want me to. This is what housekeeping typically sounds like. Housekeeping. All right, Rand. Give me a live housekeeping. Housekeeping. <laughs> Thank you, Rand. Clip it. Thank save you. it. Clip it. Save it. Thanks, man. Thanks, man. All right. Housekeeping. Yes, we're here. We're at, we're at Longleaf. We've been talking about this for a while now, doing something at Longleaf. So shout out to everybody who's here. Uh, I did receive a lot of messages of people who wanted to be here but just could not make it. Uh, so we appreciate that. Um, we will have another party coming up, like another thing to do here relatively soon. Uh, we're going to have our anniversary party on May 3rd. I like to do the. I like to segment these things out month by month. Month by month, at least do something for everybody month by month. So, this is here. We're done with it. What's the next thing? The next thing is the anniversary party, May third. We're going to be at Shady's. That's a Friday. Debating if whether or not we do like an actual live show that day or not. Maybe. Or do we just hang out and vibe? I'm perfectly fine hanging out and yeah. vibing. I think we're going to have a food truck from Breeze Through. Yep. And we'll also have. Are we going to do raffles this time? We got stuff to raffle off. Our birthday, we will have raffles, okay. yeah, including the Seth Jarvis signed mixtape. Oh, that's right. That's part of the raffle. I actually almost like forgot about that entire thing. So anyway, I thought that that was something that we could announce today. The birthday party is going to be on May 3rd. Big thanks to Mosquito Authority and Pest Authority for sponsoring Ovias and Gilio. You can check them out at BugsBite.com. Again, that's BugsBite.com. You can bundle and save. Uh, by using Mosquito Authority and Pest Authority. It's getting, I know today is like a classic spring day, but before you know it, it's going to get hot. The mosquitoes are going to be out. You want to keep those in check. So what do you do? You contact Mosquito Authority. No contract, so you just pay as you go. Uh, use the service as long as you want. But again, bundling and saving is key with Pest Authority, so go to bugsbite.com. Big thanks to Matt Davis over at State Farm. Check them out online, insuregarner.com, voginsurance.com. Or you can call Matt directly at 919-779-8277. I feel like Matt also doesn't want us talking about Duke. Maybe that's like an under-the-radar thing. More under-the-radar for Duke, the better. I Elite. think Matt will be up here today. A sneaky Elite Eight before we, can we have know him. It. We can have him come defend his Blue Devils. Maybe he can defend his Blue Devils. We shall see. So we're going to give him a call, 919-779-8277. And home field. Use the promo code. OG23 to save 15% off your order. It is third month mania for them. They've got mystery boxes. They've got new core collection. They got bomber jackets. They got hats. They got all that vintage inspired gear that you need. All you got to do is go to homefieldapparel.com and use that promo code OG23. So we were at the governor's mansion this week to do a bracket reveal with Roy Cooper. Uh, this is the last year that he's in office. This is his last bracket. Uh, so we appreciate him inviting us out there. And uh, Josh Stein, the attorney general, who's been working with Roy Cooper for a while now, he participated in the festivities. And I thought the intro to the brackets, Joe, was, was telling because clearly these two guys have traded a lot of smack back and forth about their brackets and who's been better than the other. And I think even Josh admitted, yeah, Roy's is better at this. You all have worked together for a very long time. I'm guessing there are some, there's some bracket smack that has occurred. Who's had a better bracket in the years past? Who's technically better? I'm going to kick his butt. <laughs> he has, but not this year. Oh, oh I see. Okay. I see. So that was the intro to the unveiling of the brackets. And then we got to state, and I did point out to the governor that he is actually not running for office again. I, I see this NC State beating Kentucky, and I immediately thought to myself, you know you're no longer running for office, right? Well, I'll have you know that in 2017, I did not pick the Tar Heels as the national champions, and my communications office came down and wanted me to <laughs> refilm it. But I did so, so you, you got to go what you think. So, and, the, and to Gilio's point, see, Josh Stein, yeah, nah, they're losing to Kentucky. And that is because Kentucky is a significantly better basketball team. Mm -hmm. Also, the winner of the ACC tournament the last five years has flamed out three times in the first round without even getting out of 64. Mm -hmm. 
and then two times in the round of 32. And so I, I think State is going to win the first round game, uh, but Kentucky's guard play is just too good. I do appreciate how Josh Stein had all sorts of fun facts and figures to he go was along prepped, with man. Stuff. He was super prepped. Homework. That's the difference between Ivy League people and us. I mean, <laughs> you could be naturally smart, but you got to do homework, too. This is true. He did, he did have his homework. And then we get to North Carolina and Duke. And you could tell, and again, I, I, I used that first clip with the governor about how when he, remember, he didn't pick Carolina in 2017. Everybody lost their minds. But as we come to find out, it was the reverse jinx. He did it on purpose. And there could be that element in play this go around. What I worry about for Carolina are tall scoring guards. And when you look at the games that we've lost, we we faced guards that are pretty big. And when you look at RJ at what six feet tall mm -hmm. and Elliot at six one, that's that's not a good combo when you've got a six four, six five, six six couple of guards coming at you. So that's a concern uh, going through, but I'm, I, I like I like Carolina getting to the elite okay. eight here. Okay, we'll we'll get to those picks in a second. I, I guess you're feeling kind of the same way, Josh. Yeah, similar. <laughs> UNC, Mississippi State. UNC's going to win. Okay, and then I don't know, Joe. I feel like people have we've stopped talking about Duke yeah. in a weird sort of way. Yeah, Duke's but, next year, but there's still this year to take care of, and we've not. They're kind of under the radar going into this. So yeah, Duke. <laughs> I mean, look, Duke is insanely talented. They've been inconsistent. They have a tough time when they play teams that are strong, strong mm -hmm. in the middle, mm -hmm. and just tough. Uh, but I yeah, think they, they, will, miss a five. they will get to the Sweet 16. So that was both Roy Cooper and Josh Stein uh, explaining where they see Duke and Carolina going. Do you have any – you didn't have any disagreements with those picks? Well, I mean, the governor is trying to reverse jinx. Yes. Which I get. Uh, but I picked Carolina in 17. They won. I like being right, so that's why I picked them this time too. Okay. I will say, you know, a lot of people have looked at my bracket online today. They're like Auburn, and I'm like, yeah, no. I know. I feel like UConn got the most difficult region, and I don't know why. Yeah, like I can't figure it out. They're the they've been clearly the best team all year, and they clearly have the toughest bracket. So I think ultimately, I think if they get to Arizona, they they kick ass and take names. But I don't like their chances of getting to Arizona. That's well, why bracket luck is real. Well. Cooper had pointed out that he's going to see an Arizona-North Carolina matchup because that's what the TV execs want. And, of course, Carolina fans can have all the debates all day about Caleb Love. I'm convinced that Caleb Love is a sleeper agent to help out UNC in the grand scheme of things. Roy Cooper started doing that reverse jinx again. Arizona's a complete team yeah. as well. And we know we all know about the Caleb thing. And I, I've, I love Caleb. I loved him as a Tar Heel. It was the right thing. I didn't, wasn't sure it was the right thing for him to go. It was the right thing for him to go. But he teams up with, with Larson out front, who's 6'6", six, six, mm -hmm. and Love is 6'4". I think this is, this is where uh, we, could, we could meet our, our end. So that's where he thinks the Carolina's going to lose, but watch what he does when we get to the final. Ultimate <laughs> reverse jinx yes. uh, of picking Arizona to win the national championship and – See, well, shenanigans, the real deal. Governor Cooper and I agree that the winner of the West will be the national champion. Uh, I just have the heels taking it all, beating Houston in what will be a slugfest. But uh, RJ will hit 25 points and the heels will win. So if you're watching on YouTube, you can see Roy Cooper, the governor, like hands together, praying like, you know what I'm really trying to do here. Try to explain that to the podcast only audience. You saw what the governor was doing, right, Joe? Totally transparent. <laughs> I felt like Josh Stein was at least trying to pick an actual bracket. I got issues with Cooper. Roy I got a whole list of grievances. Roy is going full fan on that one. So we are at Longleaf Swine doing the show live today. Big thanks to them for sponsoring us the last couple of months, all leading up to our bracket brisket and bourbon which is what we should have called it from the jump not big basketball bracket bonanza you didn't e run anything by me sir you, e you just you have good ideas i read like the mug the mug some, was well some. well the runner up you wanted a shirt we, could, we could not have turned a shirt around so thankfully anna at sound off said i have mugs i went that's even better so much so that we have received a lot of messages from people looking for those mugs we'll see if we can work something out 
But we're here at Longleaf. Big thanks to them. I had that smoked chicken salad sandwich, which is always a good lunchtime staple for me. What'd you go with? I went with the Frito pie today. I thought about that today. And the sweet potatoes. Sweet potatoes are always money. Big thanks to Breeze Through. Without Breeze Through, we are not here with the Ethernet cable. Facts. <laughs> Facts. Adam at Breeze Through has the longest Ethernet cable that I'm aware of, and it helped us get up online here at Longleaf. You can support Breeze Through by buying their lifetime coffee refills, getting gas, obviously, snacks, and all your tailgate supplies as we get ready for the start of the Stanley Cup playoffs. And, of course, two roosters. They're out here. They brought ice cream. I have to get into this Tuffy tracks here pretty soon, which I'm excited about. I think Rand's been hand, hand, handing those out. Speaking of PNC Arena, they've got their location at PNC Arena, which includes the Stormy tracks. So check out Two Roosters locations across the triangle. Check them out online at tworoosters.com to find out what the new flavors are. They're rotating them all the time. Joining us on the Heaster Automotive Group Hotline from the News and Observer, he is columnist Luke DeCock. Luke, what up, man? Oh, wait. Are, are you muted? What's going on here? I can't hear anything. Do we free spray? Uh, hold on a second. Hold on a second. No, I mean, everything is fine because everything audio is coming through. Hold on a second. Doop. Mute mic. Mute mic. How about now, Luke? You want to try now? No, I cannot hear you. So tell you what, why don't you back out? Just exit, and then you can come back in in the grand scheme of things. So uh, we'll kick you out of here. So I'm going to kick him from the studio, and we'll go from there. And then if Luke comes back. Luke, come, Luke comes back. Anyway, I had something for you and Luke. It has no. nothing to do with the board. It has to do with his computer. Oh, okay. He's, I think he's in, I think he's in Charlotte. Charlotte. I think he's in Charlotte, right? Yeah. I actually had something, of, a little bit of a throwback for you, for you and Luke. Oh, boy. To get to once he uh, once he jumps back on. Regardless, where were we? Giving we were, stuff away. We got roosters. We were ice talking, cream. We were talking brackets. Brackets. Completely bourbon, lost. A bourbon. Ideas. You have good ideas. Some. Not all of them. Let's be honest. That's fair. The one. But thing, nobody goes hundred for hundred. You know what? You missed. What you missed? I know you did a bracket. You yeah. Revealed your bracket. You got to do what the Gen Z kids are doing, man. Oh, what is it? Basically, you have to put together some sort of crazy TikTok escalation ladder bed, bed. like one thing after the other. I'm going to turn this into this into this. That's the next evolution of, okay. of where it's We can make go. that work. Now, speaking, of, uh, speaking of basketball, it looks like right now Michigan State seems to be in pretty good control over Mississippi State, which means if Carolina gets past their first opponent, which they should, shout out to Staten Island, they should get past Michigan State too, right? Every year except 2000. Yeah. yeah, that's usually how it works out. All right, Luke DeCock is back. Maybe we've got some audio going this time. Can you guys hear me now? Now we can, can hear, you hear you. me now. Now we, we can ditched, hear you. We ditched the Bluetooth and went old school just using the laptop mic. So as I was saying before we were so unfortunately interrupted, um, I was just admiring my beautiful Marriott hotel room in the background. Nothing screams dude at NCAA tournament like a hotel room like this. <laughs> you got to make sure you have your Marriott points, right? Isn't that that time of the year you got don't you have to tweet about bruce springsteen and your marriott points no i don't tweet about marriott points i just collect them Sorry. They we just lose joe uh we Look lost joe this. joe got astroturf and what else no it's like a golf mat thingamajig oh just what we need in the studio space oh yeah we do all right so i'm gonna kick this old school luke you pointed this out to me i'm gonna mute it but i want to see the last time you guys were covering nc state and look at <laughs> look at these two <laughs> Woo. Look at these Man. two guys. Babies. A lot, of, a lot of Howard Miles. A lot of hard. Well, for, I got questions. I got questions. First off, Luke, what happened to the beard? That was a 2015 thing. I was like a NCAA tournament beard. And then, you know, I went Jacksonville, Syracuse, Indianapolis, the whole way with the beard. So I, oh. uh, man. It's okay. Well, this one's got to go in the trash, but this one's good. And then the other, oh, yeah, that one's good. And then the other question that I have is, Joe, remember when your hair was under control? Yeah. <laughs> what happened to that? Even uh, even Rand pointed out that your hair is even more ridiculous <laughs> than looking well, from he's the never back. I've seen it. Yeah, yeah, I was gonna say I've seen it that long. Yeah. Because I remember what was it, Anthony Gill, right? 17, 18, yeah. When you had the hair that was pretty ridiculous. Yeah. So I mean I, I will say if there's one takeaway everyone should have from this, it's that I haven't lost any more hair since twenty fifteen. Um, nine years, nine years of hold in the line. Uh Luke <laughs> Buddy. No, you can Look in the Buddy, upper right corner. You dude, can see the shine. 
dude, you can see I, the shine no, up there. No, 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 right there. Okay. You actually have some right no 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 no. Sorry, dude. Take it take it from somebody else who's holding on for dear life. <laughs> you have less hair now. It's a little anyway. thin. It's a little thin. <laughs> uh but yeah, we'll move my on. My face is my face is fatter. There's no doubt about that. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're all I think we're all in that boat, right? All right, so uh, let's get back to NC State. Actually, I'll ask you these big questions. With Brownlow is here, we asked her these questions, and we'll start actually with North Carolina. And talking about North Carolina has almost gotten to the point where it's almost redundant. We all know what they are. They know what they are. So I guess the question is, can they go out and execute what they are? Is there a team in the bracket that's going to prevent them from being able to do what we know they do well, and that's play defense and find some grindier ways to win? And, you know, I think the one thing that North Carolina has going for it, and, you know, I, everyone's, like, down in North Carolina because they lost the state. Like, I'd have to go back and look, and I should have by this point, but how many times during the year did North Carolina ever miss nine shots in a row? Like, right. that game was set up for the heart-crushing, you know, the Temple of Doom, reach in, pull out the heart, throw it off the bridge. Um, you no, don't mind me. Keep going. Guys. Don't, don't mind me. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you're, right, good. Right. you're good. You guys were both looking at me like I had to. No, 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 no. I was looking um, for to boost you, to boost your levels up on the stream okay. itself. Sorry. Anyway, anyway, it was all for that Mola Ram stuff where, you know, State was going to be up 12 and then Carolina makes eight straight threes and wins the title. So I think the fact that that didn't happen, people have lost the, the plot a little bit on Carolina, which is this team has so many ways to beat you. They can come at you so many different ways. They play such good defense. They run in traditional Carolina fashion, which the last couple of UNC teams, even in 22, didn't necessarily have that gear. Uh, and, and so I feel like, you know, I think you're getting a little bit of value here in North Carolina. I think that the state loss gives, people, gives a little bit of bad taste in people's mouths and that they're a team that certainly can go out and make the Final Four and win this thing. The caveat would be they got to go to L.A., they're probably going to be there with three other West Coast teams, including Arizona. I just I feel like that's going to catch up with them eventually. And, and I'm, look, I'm with the governor. You know, just like UNC Kansas or UNC Kentucky, we're going to get UNC Arizona. Like you might as well just fill out your bracket with all the other upsets in the other 14 games because we're going to get UNC Arizona or other 13 games. We're going to get UNC Arizona. Um, and I just feel like in L.A., in the second game, Arizona's going to have an advantage there. And I like, look, I liked what I saw from Arizona at Duke. I mean, if yeah. there's one thing UNC and Arizona have in common, it's that they both went in and and won tough games in Cameron. Uh, but I, I think the Tar Heels are ready. And, I, you know, I think, you know, the floor for them is kind of Elite Eight. Um, although, you know, Michigan State looks like they've just rediscovered the magic once again. Like, I mean, they're like the, the Penguins in those years where they would make it the playoffs as the seventh seed and then, you know, win their next 16 games in a row. <laughs> Uh, you never know with Sparty, but but I do think you know North Carolina is a better team, and, and you know I, I think North Carolina Arizona is going to be a coin flip. I took Arizona, but it could go either way. Luke, last year the tournament was like upside down, we had yeah. FAU and San Diego State, and, and I was like, who the, who the heck is supposed to be here? Would it surprise you if this year was like the opposite? Like if we did get like UConn, Kentucky, Carolina, just just kind of all showing up Purdue. in Arizona? Yeah, Arizona. yeah, like. I mean, I feel like Purdue's got a little bit of Virginia 2019 in them yeah. where they're going to come back and and everybody's going to pick them to lose to Grambling and then they're going to make the Elite Eight or, or Final Four. Um, I I feel like we're going to be looking at like a one seed, a two seed, and a three seed, and a four seed. Like Auburn, Creighton, Arizona, who's left? Houston. Like, like I feel like it's going to be like not like chalk chalk because like Joe, you would know with UConn, if it were that easy, everyone would get it. Yeah. Right. Um, Rule number three. And but, they somehow got the most difficult bracket, Luke. Like, I need Patrick yeah, here's, to study this thing for me. Yeah, no, I, I, I – here's the thing about their bracket, which is crazy. If you actually look at it sort of 1 through 11, like the teams that have a realistic chance of ending up in, in the sort of Elite Eight conversation, they actually got what might be the toughest bracket, but their 1, 2, 3, 4 is the hardest. So if UConn actually gets an upset or two and they get a 5 through 11 in that regional with them – they may actually have a really easy path, but they, you know, you're asking Illinois and Iowa State and Auburn to all lose. I mean, Auburn may be the best two seed and they're four seed. Yeah. So, you know, there's, you know, it is, it is difficult at the top, but as you like to say, bracket luck is real. It wouldn't take that much for you, for everyone to be looking back in two weeks saying, geez, did you kind of have to play anybody to get here? And I, yeah. I think that could happen. So I think what that video that I pulled up from 2015 uh, on YouTube, that was for state, right? 
That was State's yeah, magical run, lost starting in Pittsburgh. Okay, in yeah, Pittsburgh. Lost so Anton, no, no, they lost to Louisville and Syracuse. It yeah. started in Pittsburgh with the BJ Anya left-handed hook shot at the buzzer, followed by the crying piccolo. Girl. Crying piccolo girl. Now you two cannot recreate your looks from that time, but can NC State recreate a little bit of magic? They, they're in Pittsburgh, in Pittsburgh right? They, they had that Washington mojo going there. Yeah, Look, they're coming States, off this championship. They're feeling good. It's their their draw to me is really really tough. I mean, I think Texas Tech is athletic as all get out. Other than Kerwin Walton, who really is Kenny Williams, <laughs> I don't. I want to see the documentation that it's really not Kenny Williams, crackhead Kenny, as he was affectionately known as for Carolina. Um, I think Texas Tech's really well. They're really well coached too, and then I think Kentucky's Kentucky's the most talented team in the field. Period. Yeah, I. I I, 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 the more I'm here and walking the Texas Tech locker room yesterday and seeing three dudes sitting in there, um, I'm not sure Texas Tech has enough left in the tank here. It may be famous last words. The biggest man's not going to play. Their other big man's hurt. They don't really have any way to defend DJ Burns. They're going to double yeah. on every catch. All state has to do is hit shots to win this game. And they can actually press and run and do things to wear out Texas Tech. I think they caught Texas Tech at a good time. Now, Texas Tech can shoot, and they can defend, and they can get after you. And Grant McCaslin, you said, can coach. There's no doubt about that. I just don't know how many bullets Texas Tech has left to fire. And if they don't shoot 60%, um, I think NC State has two or three decided sort of schematic advantages. Like, I'm telling you right now, this is going to be so wrong. It's going to be fun. This is the Ben Middlebrooks game. Like, we have a Modiara game in, in Washington. We had some yeah. DJ Burns games. Yeah. Yeah. This is shaping up as the Ben Middlebrooks game. They're going to double DJ Burns, and he's going to hand the ball to Ben Middlebrooks, who's going to attempt to dunk it without getting a technical foul. All right. All right. Before we say goodbye, we appreciate the time. Luke DeCock from the News and Observer hanging out with us. <laughs> not the reaction I expected. Uh, you got the facial reaction from us. You got the facial reaction. And if it does happen, happen, uh, then yes, all the credit to you. One thing that I wanted to kind of dabble in before we say goodbye, and it, the Canes have been great, but this typically happens to the Canes regardless. NCAA, ACC tournament happens, NCAA tournament, everything's basketball, basketball, basketball before people re-enter into the Canes orbit. Shh. I mean, Canes fans know this, but if you've kind of been checked out, it looks like who they've added has truly unlocked some things for the Carolina Hurricanes. Who knew? It's it's almost like adding really good players to a really good team makes everyone in the locker room feel better and it's not insane. left behind. <laughs> Kids have been good, dude. Like, it was already a chaotic night for NC State, but it was a chaotic night on the championship Saturday uh, for, yeah. for the for the, for the the Canes as well. And they, you know, they're back in action tonight against Philadelphia. But I can basically – now that Gensel's there getting used to things and acclimated and Freddie's back getting into his groove, the Canes can only get better and more situated by the time the playoffs start. Yeah. I mean, I don't, like, I honestly don't know how much better they can get after we did, what is it? 31 goals, 35 goals in seven games. I did the math in the column the other day. Um, I'm not sure they can get much better, but I think they're playing well enough to win the Stanley cup right now, especially with the goaltending they're getting. Um, I really think one, the additions added guys who can finish. And what have we said about this team for five years? It creates chances it can't finish. Yeah. And they added two guys who, who can't finish, and in Kuznetsov case, really create chances. And this is a guy who desperately needed a fresh start, desperately needed a change of scenery, has come in, seems to film, which was a question. Um, and then, you know, Gensel is just a finisher. And 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 honestly, I I, I, I try to get into this with, with Jordan, with Jordan Stahl on Monday or whatever day, it was Tuesday when I was talking to him before I left to here. I, I, I was trying to rephrase the question like nine different ways. Is it yeah. part of this just the fact that you guys have gone through five deadlines without doing shit, and when you fucking do something, everybody's like, let's go! Like, let's go! Is it's only part of it about just, that, right? Yeah, like, isn't part of it just the fact that you guys are fired up and not like, all right, well, I guess this is, we're going to do it with this group, and we think we can, like, you're not, it's none of that happy bullshit. It's, Holy crap, man. We are a better team. Let's go out and kick some ass. And, like, if you look at them to the deadline, what they have done, done, they have gone out and kicked that. Now, Rangers game, obviously, we all had flashbacks to 2022. That looked like right. 2022 playoff. But, generally speaking, against good teams against bad teams, they're up there, you know, really, really, really banging heads. And I think part of, like, I think 16 of 18 sk skaters have multiple points in the last seven games, and they, they certainly did in the six games after the deadline. 
it's not just that they've added top end talent, which they have. It's everybody on the roster has gotten better because yes. they've all moved down a role and they all believe like, hey, it's the same thing that happened when the hurricane straight for Doug Waite in January of 20, uh, 2006. It was a good team. They were above uh, performing above everybody's expectations. Nobody knew how long it was going to last. You know, Labby was process over results, all that stuff. You trade for Doug Waite and you are in. Like, that's it. We're going for this. And at that moment, they took their game. Like, Eric Cole scored, like, 12 goals in the next 13 games, and he wasn't on Doug Waite's line. It was just everybody like, all right. You know, it's like a, it's like the good mango. It's like a B12 shot. Luke DeCock, columnist, Houston Observer. All right, man, we'll talk to you next week. See you guys. Big thanks to Whitaker and Hamer for sponsoring Obies and Julio. Check them out online, wh.lawyer, attorneys and counselors at law. Closing a house, maybe you got a traffic violation, maybe you're trying to get out of a grant of rights. They've got people at Whitaker and Hamer that can help you out with that. Again, attorneys and counselors at law, check them out, wh.lawyer. Speaking of closing on a house, you want to buy a house, you know who can help you out with that or selling a house? That would be our friends at Hometown Realty. Check them out, myhtr.com. You can buy, sell, and you can calculate and Joe, we've had a couple of people come up to us while we're here at Longleaf talking about Butcher's Market. We have. The prepared meals have been saving people, man. I'm telling you. Prepared meals are absolutely fantastic. Everything. They got a great kitchen. And our back guy there. going to Wellington. Yes. That's that also key. key, too. Very, very key. You can check them out, thebutchersmarkets.com. Again, that's thebutchersmarkets.com. Big thanks to DraftKings for sponsoring Obies and Julio. You can use that promo code OG24. I was wrong about Wake Forest and App State. I didn't think Wake Forest wanted to be there. Wake actually looked like they wanted to be there last night in the NIT, beating App State. No escalators taken for the Demon Deeks, Joe. No, and I was apparently I've been doing this wrong all these years. Yeah, what did you I do should wrong? have been betting on the NIT the whole time. Why? Two and zero oh now. In my NIT plays, <laughs> I don't think you guys want my NCAA plays, quite frankly. Maybe, maybe not. I I did some weird stuff. So here's the thing about DraftKings that I've actually come to enjoy as I log into my bets today. I'll give you mine while you're doing no, that. I, it's just okay, like, I, it? I, love, I love that they already have prepared single-game parlays for me. Like, I don't have to build my own. Right. Like, for, for instance, today with NC State. Uh, NC State over 15. Uh, what do we got here? We got NCAA tournament money line to beat Texas Tech. DJ Horn over 15 and a half points. DJ Burns over 13 and a half points. And Casey Morsell with over 10 and a half points. Like, I, I like that. Okay. State to win with those points. I can do that. Um, there's also a money line, just a straight money line for NC State plus 170. Why not? I'll put five bucks down on that one. Uh, I did not do well with my Wake Forest app. Say things I didn't think Wake wanted to be there, but you know what? That's what today is for. That is what today. Look what we got now. What do we got? We got now? more. More hats. Oh, love it. From Matt. We oh, have orange. I going to say, we had like gold. He's the marketing king, man. He really is. The absolute marketing king. He's I the bestest. That. Here, I put that one down there, too. Okay. We'll my play of the day is actually McNeese getting six and a half against my Zags. Okay. They're no longer my Zags. I set them free. And now Will Wade steps into the hot seat because I have. Of the Cowboys going all the way to the final four. Ooh, ooh. All right. So if you want to do something with this, by all means, use that promo code OG OG24. Again, that's OG24. And you'll start getting some bonus bets out of that. With DraftKings, they're the official sports betting partner of NASCAR. And now with it live in North Carolina, you can use that promo code. And when you bet $5, you'll receive $250 instantly in bonus bets. So download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now using that promo code OG24 to bet $5 and get $250 instantly in bonus bets. Already highlighted the fact that they got great features. We've got our own bracket pool, which is a lot of fun. I love those same game parlays and the player props. All that there in the DraftKings app. The crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 877-718-5543 or visit morethanagame.nc.gov. 21 plus, North Carolina only. 
Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. Deposit and eligibility restrictions apply. Terms at DraftKings.com slash Sportsbook slash NC. NASCAR is not a sponsor of this promotion and used under license. Really well done. Uh, but one of the things I love so far of newcomers to gambling. Yes. A lot like you mm -hmm. have come up and said, hey, you know, I, I downloaded all the apps. Yeah. And you were right. DraftKings is by far the best. By far the best. By far. It's a piece of cake. Yes. Don't sleep on the desktop version either, but I, I am, I because I got on the desktop to kind of tinker around and learn yeah. some more about it. But yeah, uh, in terms of the app, it's fantastic. Sing us out or something. Do you, do you want to try that again? They don't have headphones, though. I can make it work. You want to get Hayes here? Yeah, Hayes hey, needs to be here. Hayes. 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 Come here. Come here. Come here. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, but we'll get Hayes here first real quick. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll explain what we're yeah, doing. We'll away. explain what we're doing. Hayes, grab the mic real quick. Uh, first off. No, you're still here. You're still, yeah, Rand, don't go anywhere. Hayes, first off, you, your mic is good. I got you on. My bad. It's all good. Um, thanks, for, uh, thanks for comping the tickets. I knew you would. Joe really wanted to buy the tickets, but thank you for providing some giveaway tickets. That's right. That's right. Okay. Local local businesses. It's all about local businesses. Got to support each other. So I bought the shirts. What's that? I did so buy the shirts. I buy that's the good. Shirts. I tried that's, to get it that, going. They came out of the OG Media account. You don't have headphones, so you're gonna have to use my headphones real quick. I can hear you. Joe wants. No, you got uh, to hear the music. Oh, it's Joe. it's a Frasier type piano. Yeah. Hey, baby, I hear the so, blues are gotcha. calling. Well, so, okay. The Hold whole on a pack second. Well, well, while you're looking for that, I mean, obviously, you know, I never listened to your podcast, but <laughs> I'm offended that uh, I have not been mentioned as a possible Inovana jingle, jingle maker. <laughs> Chip Patterson, Rand, all these, like, those are the best guys we know. I'm like, I mean, I'm like, uh, what, what was the shoot? I had a good one. <laughs> um, and I wanted to pitch it to you, but I was just waiting. I was like, no, they don't, no, they don't want my... Uh, they don't want to ask. They don't, um, they don't get any help. What song was it? I was doing something with the Nirvana, but I'll, I'll come up with something. Yeah, right, so, so I want you to riff to? a little bit. You're going to get the Frasier music. Uh, you, 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 you're going to get the, you hear you're gonna get the yeah, Frasier yeah, music. Yeah, I didn't realize I was so supposed to sing. How over would you? It. No, no, no. How would you sing? You got a tune for that? You got to sing over that? Well, he wants some yeah, sort of like Frasier esque Hammond. Good night, Raleigh. Let me hear it one more time. Let me hear yeah, it one yeah, more yeah. time. Hear the wolf pack call in. So the problem is when I play this music, it mutes our microphones. Okay. So hold on a second. I've unmuted it, so go ahead. It's the no show. I thought this one. Yeah. You wanted more, I know, but like no, that's no. that's off the top. But I'll I'll, I'll do it. I'll, I'll, All right, I'll that mess works. around with it. All right, what do we got coming up at your album? Friday. What do we got coming up? Pat McGee uh, there tomorrow night. We're doing a lot of like that. You know, you know when you watch the Super Bowl now, and we're like '40s guys, we're like, this is for me. <laughs> yes. We got a lot yeah. of those shows at the Rialto. We got uh, the Verve Pipe coming up in a few oh, months. Geez. Joan Osborne coming this fall. So if you like '90s hits. I'll why we're bringing why am I transported also. back to Batteries Plus off of Maynard Road in Cary? Yeah, listening to G105. Weekend Excursion was big throwback oh, college geez, vibes man. for a lot of people. That's crazy. They're That's like, the... they're like, can you make it smell like the fraternity that I remember them from? <laughs> like, we will try. We will what's, try. What's the best way to find tickets? No. Um, best way to buy best tickets. Way to buy tickets uh, uh, online. TheRialto.com. Most shows you can walk up and buy, but we show. There's a a guy named Kate Rudy awesome artist and she is also just cool and well known around raleigh she's in like the you know like if you ever been in do either of you guys bartend to work in restaurants no you know there's just like a bar restaurant scene in a yeah. cool way they take care of each other yeah. they yeah, hang yeah, yeah, out yeah. whatever anybody who wasn't working at a bar or restaurant that night was at the rialto because she's just out into that scene and stuff so and that those are usually good vibes those are good party people right so um she was a great show um and i learned today you have 40s at the real we do have 40s of uh those, of uh, those count joe 40s count these do these don't yeah. these don't and then we, uh, tonight we shirt. got comedy since you guys are live we got comedy on thursday night our monthly co comedy show so let's go good times all right thanks for hanging out man. thank you guys appreciate for doing you. this appreciate Keep it, up good work. appreciate it man appreciate it all right so in lieu of like normal hey joe questions we got a bunch of hey joe response to what we talked about with clemson okay the acc and the rest so 
I figure we'll address a couple of things mainly before we get out of here in an update to what has happened so far this week. Two key items. The first one is after Clemson sued the ACC, the ACC did what they did with Florida State. They countersued Clemson and also were like, fine, you want to point out in your lawsuit that you never voted on countersuing Florida State. Well, we'd like to point out that these are all things that you've agreed to in the past. You haven't offered to work on this thing, but you've offered to work on this thing by suing us. You're showing us that you don't want to work. I'm paraphrasing here, but the ACC basically throwing back at Clemson a lot of, oh, so you want to air out some dirty laundry? Fine. We'll air out some of our own dirty laundry in reference to you. But the most intriguing update in the last 24 hours has nothing to do with Clemson or Florida State. It has to do with the school that you and I and a lot of people understand to be the real linchpin to what is next when it comes to conference realignment. That is North Carolina. Greg Barnes at Inside Carolina caught up with UNC Board of Trustees Chair John Pryor, and he told IC, quote, I think what Clemson is doing is 100% proof positive that a significant portion of the membership of the conference is unhappy. I don't see how it is anyone in anyone's interest for the ACC leadership to try and browbeat its member schools from getting access to information and being transparent. And that's kind of the case Clemson is making. I think it shows that what is supposed to be a member-based organization is not being led in a way that represents the best interests of all its members, but instead it's really representing the bottom tier of the membership at the expense of the top tier, which is why Clemson and Florida State are doing what mm. they are doing. It's just that obvious. And when he was asked about Clemson's filing on Tuesday and you know the university's actions in, pers in pursuing all options, Pryor said, quote, I think it's too soon to tell, but it certainly creates added pressure on the conference to address the concerns of its member schools. This is not the first time that Pryor has talked about UNC's position on this. Uh, and they also point out that Bubba Cunningham is being a little bit more diplomatic in the process. So wait a second. The ACC hired the, the athletic director from the only small school in the Big Ten. Yeah. From the weakest link in yeah. the Big Ten. Yeah. And that person is now looking out for the other weak links? Yeah, weird, right? No. Okay, a couple things about this that are maddening to me. And I get that lawyers have to lawyer and you have to throw arguments out there the best way that you can. Yeah. However, you just hit on the big issue. Who did the presidents vote for? That's fair. Nobody held a gun to their head when they were making the vote and approving who their new commissioner you was. You could have gone in any number of directions as to who your next commissioner was going to be. You could have thought outside the box. Instead, you went for what, Joe? The safest possible inside choice ever. Okay, so there's mistake number one. Mistake number two, which I have a problem with, Clemson saying, well, how can we explore our opportunities? Same with John Pryor from the UNC, uh, from the UNC Board of Governors. How can we explore our, 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 our possibilities, our, our options? That was the freaking point of the grant of rights, guys. You all signed this back in 2016 or 2017, whenever it was, because you didn't want schools doing that because you wanted everybody locked in. You all, and the ACC pointed this out in their countersuits, they actually brought receipts from quotes from people from Clemson saying, this secures the league. It best positions us to do X, Y, Z. And then now suddenly you want to take it back? I get that the deal has changed. I get that the landscape has changed. But you did things... I'll borrow the phrase from Mike K of the Charlotte Observer. It is compounding mistakes. You set off a chain of compounding mistakes that you're now trying to get out of. I'm not trying to fault you for getting out of it. I don't yeah. want people to misunderstand. I get why Carolina wants to find a different situation. I get why Florida State wants to and Clemson wants to. But please understand that you are the members. You had opportunities to argue this. You signed off on it. And then now you're suddenly like, whoa, 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 this sucks. This is unconscionable. You signed it for a reason. So all this stuff is really getting tired and old. Now, I did think it was interesting that the Board of Trustees is trying to take a page out of like the Clemson and the Florida State book because that is the antithesis of how Bubba operates. Because there's another aspect out there that I think is interesting, and I brought this up, and I think it's important to uh, actually highlight the blurb from John Orand in his Puck newsletter back last week when they were talking about a Silicon Valley sized economic shift in sports. And they put together this think tank. And I thought this was interesting that Bubba Cunningham, the AD at UNC, was a part of this think tank along with the Tennessee AD, the president of Florida, and others. I mean, heck, even Grant Hill is related to Jimmy Haslam, who I really don't want near anything, but 
whatever. That's the Brown, Browns owner. But the part that I thought was interesting is that none of the conference commissioners have met with this think tank, which means that everybody has their own ideas about where they want to go. Bubba understands that things are changing. So don't insult Bubba. Like, so honestly, don't insult Bubba Cunningham, anybody, as if he doesn't understand where things are going and he's trying to play it as close to the best as possible. That's how you should do it. Because what's the old saying, Joe? Real G's? And they move in silence. And that's why I'm ready to bestow the honor of Ninja Commissioner or Ninja AD to Bubba Cunningham. Anyway, that's going to wrap it up. We did it. We did it. Do you have any more shorties? Uh, I don't. I desperately use, need to use the boys room, though. Uh, oh. <laughs> you are done, which is fine. Anyway, thanks to everybody who showed up to our spot here at Longleaf. Big thanks to Longleaf for hosting us today. Uh, and having uh, the yeah, come and down, Edenton in person, plenty of parking, love the outdoor space. They got the games on down here. We have a perfect day for just it, unbelievable food, too. An absolutely perfect day for it, man. So, again, big thanks to everybody watching, big thanks to everybody coming out. And we will be back at it tonight. Joe had the bright idea of doing oh. an after dark <laughs> at around midnight, right? Around midnight? Yeah. All right. Start. So after the NC State game, we'll do a recap on the Carolina and State games. We'll see you around midnight on the OG channel. Mm -hmm.